72 comments. I'm not going to uh, read them all. I'm going to actually, I'll do the shorter ones to start out. Ted's music. Maybe a better question is why don't we subsidize jazz like we do classical music, the opera and ballet, so that our culture doesn't die? John McLaughlin makes a good argument for this. You know, that would be a really sensible thing. But uh, I don't think America is a country that wants to embrace its own culture. It mainly, it's mainly interested in exploiting it. Uh, Jeffrey Newton responds to that comment because the artists are either individual or small group for the most part, as opposed to 100 member symphony orchestra. That and rich people feel important when they go to the symphony. So they throw money at symphonies, as does Uncle Sam. Jazz is still a bastard child. However, the U.S. military is by far the largest subsidizer of music in the USA, including jazz. Every bass has a jazz band. It's a great gig if you can stand the military lifestyle. Yeah. Someone came back, subsidized music? That idea needs to be eliminated. Okay. Tony Buimi. Jazz and classical and theater take at least a little knowledge of music, and we see society fading on so many fronts. It's sad, but reality is the U.S. culture has declined drastically in the past 30 years. Look at theater as well. Dying arts except for the wealthy. My mother sang with Ted Lewis. Me and My Shadow was his big song. And I was exposed to music at a young age in the 60s, so I was lucky. My grandmother played piano in silent movies in New York City, and her family were musicians. Lucky for me. Economically, middle-class people are losing disposable income from government-created inflation. So we have to cut out entertainment. Death by a thousand cuts. Well, Tony, I think you've made some really good points here. Unfortunately, uh, you're right in many ways. I don't think uh, uh, the, di the arts are dying so much uh, as being ignored uh, because of, the, of a variety of factors, so many choices uh, that screwed up times we're living in. Uh, so it's, it's true that theater, going to a theater, going to theater in New York City, going to a Broadway show, Hamilton was six hundred dollars a ticket, uh, but it cost at least a hundred dollars to see a Broadway show. Um, and go to a jazz club, you're going to spend nearly that as well. So the only certain numbers of people have that kind of disposable income. But in New York City, you can get down to Smalls for over twenty five dollars, and and hear a lot of music and and walk out of the club without losing your, your bankroll. So, and there are other places around that. There's plenty of jazz in other cities. It's not a giant thing, but believe me, there's a lot of people playing this music, even here in Tucson, Arizona, uh, which is hardly a bastion of uh, jazz. There's a jazz club here now, and there's some really good musicians. And I think that's true in a lot of cities. Uh, Jeffrey Lawrence, there are many styles of jazz. I think it's an art form that's still evolving. Sometimes when people find out that a popular song was written by a jazz artist, their heads explode. But I think the key is early education about the music and encourages a fertile, fertile mind. You know, Jeffrey, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think uh, education is the key to uh, reaching people and uh, turning them onto jazz. And as I mentioned previously, one of the uh, aspects of... Uh, the decline of uh, the arts in America, especially music, is that um, we lost uh, music education in schools back in the 80s. So uh, unfortunately, uh, people aren't sophisticated. Kids aren't sophisticated. Uh, and uh, with so many different choices, they may never uh, know about jazz. But nevertheless, there are jazz programs in some schools. And... Uh, Playing an instrument is still fun, so I'm hopeful. Uh, acid for blood. Even though he's never seen, he'll give a blood contribution if uh, he if you give him some acid. Acid for blood says I think the word hate is a strong word. I think it's like any. I think it's like anything music. It's a matter of taste. Still, there are a lot of great genres of music I don't like, but I don't think people. I think people don't perhaps understand the art form of jazz, generally speaking. So he thinks it's a comprehensive, it's a, uh, people just don't comprehend it. They just, they just don't get it. Krypton Reef, interesting name. The more stressed people are, the more they crave predictability. 
The predictability is intolerable to a person in survival mode. Jazz requires the listener to let go and just listen. A lot of people in modern society are too rigid for that. Yes, you speak the truth, my friend, especially now after COVID. The, the surviving is tough. There's some re a reply to this. Let's see what the reply is. Alan Kirkby says, very interesting analysis. My personal view is if people don't like, if the people who don't like jazz took the time to study the history and evolution of jazz, they would hopefully hear, they would ho they would hopefully when they hear modern jazz solo, small group, big band fusion and so forth, perhaps get some idea what the music is all about. Anyway, peace to all. Of course, if people hear it and they spend some, they, they give it more than a cursory listen and even better if they go to hear it live, they're probably going to get turned on to it. They're going to like it. Most people do when they actually take the time to sit there and listen to it. Legal Eagles. People aren't exposed to too much of the jazz. I like he calls it the jazz. People aren't exposed to too much of the jazz that people like us listen to. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you, sir. People aren't exposed to too much of the jazz that people like us listen to. I really enjoy taking people on a jazz journey. Let the, let's be the educators, not the preachers. Yeah. Yeah. This, see, people, it's interesting. These comments are very uh, thoughtful, well-written. Uh, and I, I see jazz listeners, I don't want to say they're more intelligent. Perhaps they use their brains more often, their creativity. Uh, that said, anybody can get into the music, no matter who they are. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, somebody put a porn thing in here. When, when people leave comments on uh, my channel, they sometimes include link links to porn. They spam my, my videos. So I have to uh, report it to YouTube, and they take them away. Okay. Vic NSI. His, his profile picture says straight out of nowhere. I don't know if that's a film or what that's about or a political movement. Anyway, Vic says... It's so easy to hate something you don't understand. My view is, I think it's impossible to hate this art form if one were opportune to become well-informed as to what jazz is really about. Not just as a culture, i.e. the lifestyle of its early practitioners, but it's also technically as a discipline. Yeah. Okay. Robert Alcock. I think people hate jazz because they don't know how to hear when they can't anticipate what's coming next. They prefer familiar and predictable music. Let me grab a spot of my lemon soda here and I'll respond to that. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I think people have been conditioned to uh, respond to something that's familiar they can easily go back to. They don't have to think. Uh, they don't want to explore so much. So I, I, I agree with that. You know, jazz is uh, never the same. I mean, improvisation is, is of the moment. Some people are not going to like that. Okay, let's see. Andrew Sanzini. Seems to be a hit and miss thing. I'm nearly 20 and have been hooked since I was a child. Well, there are young people who dig jazz. I mean... On my uh, statistics, let me let me jump over to that for a second here. I'm going to give you the statistic as to what are the age groups who are watching uh, my video here, my videos on the YouTube channel. Let me go to, let me see here, analytics. Uh, I have, have complicated audience. Okay. Let me break it down here. That's when they come. Where's the age? Okay, this is interesting. Top geographics, 37.5% of my audience is from the United States, 6.7% Japan, 5% the UK, 3.9% France, 3.7% Italy. Goes down 167 different countries. Uh, let's see here. Okay, 92% of my viewers are men. Uh, okay. Under 13, 0.2%. But uh, the 18 to 24 is perhaps 
the youngest, uh, the smallest demographic, 10.9, about 11%. And 65 plus is the highest with 26%. Um, and 55 to 64, next 21.5. And then between 18 and 54, uh, between 10 and 15%. So the audience, uh, nearly half of my audience is over 55. Um, and only... Uh, uh, a quarter of my audience is uh, under 25. I'd like to change that around. And I think that's the challenge that we the, that we face here. You know, as we go down to these comments, now we face, I have some skin in the game, so to speak, only because I love jazz. It's It's been a, a part of my life since I was a kid. I think it's a very unique, exciting art form. And I think it's good for your brain and your spirit and your soul to listen to it. So from my perspective, I want more people to jump on this bandwagon than I'm on. The thing about jazz that I think opens it up to so many people is it's an umbrella word for so many different types of music. Uh, the common theme, improvisation. But once you get outside that, at this point, really, it could be anything, uh, as we know. So... I think I got, uh, I don't want to go to any more into the hate thing here. We've got the picture of the common, some common theme here. Uh, although one uh, comment did say that uh, uh, women don't like it because other women aren't involved in it. That's, that used to be true, but that's, that's rapidly changing. Um, is there are more and more women playing jazz? Uh, still not as many as men, but the numbers are growing. And, uh, Women are making important contributions. Women like, uh, well, we lost Jerry Allen, but Esperanza Spaulding, Terry Lynn Carrington. Uh, you know, there's some incredible people out there of the female persuasion. Uh, so, but I understand that. You know, I mean, most of, most of jazz dudes, 92% of the, 92% of the viewers on my channel are jazz dudes. Uh, so let's get some women, more women in here, hopefully. Uh, certainly, uh, when, when I listen to music, I close my eyes, I leave behind who the person is, where they're from, what they look like, what sex they are, whatever. It's one thing. Either they can play or they can't play. It's really as simple as that. Uh, and more and more women can play. There's certainly no doubt about that. Uh, so I bid you a fond farewell, uh, for, I don't know how long it'll be, uh, because I'm in the process of relocating to Guanajuato, Mexico. Uh, I'll probably post a video uh, in a couple of weeks of uh, what, it's, what it looks like down there. And there is jazz in Guanajuato. Uh, in fact, the next town uh, near Guanajuato is San Miguel de Allende, which is a kind of a part-time residence for Doc Severinsen. Doc had a... Doc, Doc uh, went to a, hear a, a Spanish band down there, a Mexican band. I liked the music so much he sat in and he ended up hiring him to, to be his group. Doc's amazing. In his 90s, still playing. Wow. What, a, what an inspiration he is. Doc Severinsen. Yeah. So uh, I will probably shoot some video down there of jazz musicians on the street. Uh, concerts, clubs, a lot of music down there, a lot of culture down there, which is why it's exciting for me. A very vibrant uh, place. Now, I got a big challenge ahead of me, a huge challenge. I've got to become fluent in Spanish. Right now, I'm still having my high school Spanish. I could barely have a conversation. I'm going to jump into this intensely because it's something I really want to do. And I love to talk to people about their stories. For many years, I've been talking to jazz musicians about their stories. Now, as I integrate myself into Mexican culture, I want to talk to Mexican people about their stories. To do that, I will need to uh, be able to speak the language. So that's the next step for me. Thanks for taking the time to view this video. Stay healthy. Keep listening to jazz. As I mentioned, it's good for you. And if you can, turn a friend or two onto the music. Couldn't hurt.